What's up guys, Peter here from Reviews on Anything. And as you can imagine, we get quite a few requests here for reviewing products that are not very exciting. Uh, and initially, a few days ago, I got an email uh, that didn't get me very excited either. Uh, it asked to review a bunch of headlamps. And I was like, ah, oh, here we go again. Uh, but reading further down the email, it said that they were headlamps from Nightcore, which was already a trigger because Nightcore, uh, if you don't know, is one of the best brands when it comes to flashlights out there. Reading even further, it said that they're headlamps designed for the mining and petrochemical industry uh, and that they're super, super tough. And it actually asked if I wanted to drive over them with my car, put them in the freezer, drop them, stomp on them and really abuse them in order to see how tough they really are. I got them right here. They're the Nightcore EH1 and EH1S, which are pretty much identical except for the battery inside. And as you can maybe already tell, they are quite uh, tough little units. Uh, and you can also imagine that I'm pretty excited about this test because uh, we are going to take them outside, we're going to dump them in the water, drive over them, drop them, stomp them and really abuse them to see how tough these little lights really are. Obviously we're going to take a close look as well to show you all the features, uh, but this is going to be a good one. Alright, so here we are with the Nightcore EH1 and EH1S. Uh, right from the bat, uh, I have to say that these lights are identical. Uh, you can see that this one still has to protect the film on it. Uh, but they're identical in, uh, in the light, in the output, in the lumens and in the uh, modes they have. The only real difference is that this one has one 3400 mAh battery and this one has two. Uh, so you can use this one uh, a bit longer obviously uh, since it has more battery capacity. Uh, but it is also slightly heavier at 191 grams versus the 150 grams of the S model. Uh, but uh, other than the battery they are exactly the same. So what are we working with here? Now, uh, like I said before, these lights are aimed at very high demand environments. Think uh, an oil platform, a mine, uh, a nasty environments where you really have to rely on your equipment. Nightcore already makes uh, high-end flashlights uh, that are of exceptional quality sometimes, but they've really thrown the kitchen sink and then some at these. And uh, obviously it's no joke. I mean, if you're a few kilometers below the ground, you want a light that you can rely on. Uh, and that is exactly what Nightcore has made here. So since they are identical, let's have a look at the EH1S. Uh, what are we working with here? Size-wise, it is 80 through 3 by 70 by 52 millimeters. And like I said, this one weighs 151 grams. On the front, not much to see. Just the lens. And if you look closely, it is one LED for the white light and four LEDs for the red light, which we'll come to in a minute when we look at the modes. On top, there is the single button uh, operation. Uh, it's just the only button that is there to select all the modes, turn it on and off. This little uh, loop here for a lanyard or whatever. Nothing on the bottom. And then on the back, you have the charging connector right here and a little clip so you can clip it on your helmet or your head uh, mount that actually comes with the light. Because uh, obviously you can imagine when you're running around in uh, environments like a mine or a, an oil rig, you're probably wearing a hard hat helmet and then this uh, clips on nice and easy. Uh, that's really all there is to see. Um, as you can see it's all uh, plastic, but it's extremely hard plastic. Uh, we're going to do a bunch of tests to show you how tough these lights really are. Uh, but for now, let's uh, just say that it's, the plastic is uh, exceptionally hard, it feels super rugged. Uh, even this uh, model with only one battery feels you know, nice and heavy in the hand. When you pick it up, you, f you feel almost like, oh, yes, quality product here right away. Um, that's all there is to see, really. Uh, the yellow color obviously makes it easier to find uh, in a darker environment when there's limited light available. Uh, but the transparent front, I suppose, you know, it doesn't really matter which color that is. Uh, in the end, it is about the light output. Now, when it comes to that light output, um, this it has a maximum output of 260 lumens, uh, both of them have. Which doesn't sound like much uh, really, because we've looked at uh, bike lights that go way over 700 uh, lumens. Um, and we've, you know, even a small uh, semi-traditional LED bike light will go over 260 uh, quite easily. And that's the highest setting. Uh, you can go a setting lower to 65 and an even lower setting to uh, 22 lumens. And obviously depending on the setting that you use, uh, you get more juice out of your battery. Uh, but if you think about it, when you're in a mine and there's zero ambient light around you, uh, 260 lumen really is all you need. Uh, you don't really need to have a thousand lumens on your head in order to see when there's no other light uh, around you. And don't forget, I mean, it might have 
Uh, this one only has a single 3400 milliamp hour battery, uh, the other one has two. Uh, but more lumens means that you burn through your battery much quicker. Uh, so I think Nightcore struck a good balance here between enough light and battery life. Because, uh, you know, um, they claim that even this one gets five hours of battery life out of the highest settings and it goes up to 60 hours when you put it in the lowest setting. Uh, so, you know, um, it's, an, it's a piece of equipment you can rely on for longer periods of time. And there's no need for a thousand lumens when there's no other light around and then you burn through your battery in an hour uh, and then what? Uh, and if you think about how long the average mining shift lasts, uh, it makes more sense to do it this way. Now, I'll show you uh, the different modes, obviously. Click it once and we have the super bright setting. Click it another time and we go a setting lower to 65 lumens and click it one more time and we go to the very low setting of 22 lumens. Um, like I said, this will last uh, 60 hours with uh, just a single battery, so you can imagine it's double with the double battery pack. Uh, and 22 lumens, uh, you know, might not be enough to uh, work with, uh, but for example, when you're waiting uh, for your ride back up or whatever, uh, you know, 22 lumens will do. I like that they've stuck to uh, a one-button operation, because the last thing you want when you're down in a mine or on an oil rig or whatever, uh, where you'll probably be wearing gloves, uh, is to fiddle around with several buttons, fiddle around with several modes. It's not necessary, just high, medium, low, end of story, and you're good to go. So that's nice and simple, uh, keeping the light simple, keeping the operation simple, uh, that is exactly what you want. Not to mention that when you add more stuff, there's more stuff that can go wrong, uh, and the last thing you want when you're you know, in a mine is that your light stops working on you, which is obviously a disaster. So besides the normal operating modes, there's a few uh, special case modes. Um, these are not directly accessible uh, and you won't ex access them by accident because they're sort of made for emergency situations. They're still operated with just the single button, uh, but you have to press and hold it for a bit longer in order to activate those modes. So here we go, uh, this, these are the normal modes. Then you press and hold for three seconds and it goes into SOS mode. Uh, if you're familiar with Morse codes, this is the Morse code for SOS. And it does that by itself, so if there's uh, some kind of problem or uh, you know you need to send out the SOS signal, you can just use this mode and it does it all by itself. You don't have to go uh, clicking through. Now when we press the button one more time from SOS mode, we go into location beacon mode. You can imagine when you're waiting for a rescue party or um, if you're stuck somewhere in the dark, you want to activate this uh, as a sort of a beacon that keeps flashing for a very long time, or as long as the battery lasts uh, from that point on, obviously. Uh, but it's a very low drainage on the battery and it's still an indicator uh, to where you are. Now the other special mode is the constant flashing red illumination mode. So if we activate that mode uh, by pressing the button for three seconds, you can see that the lights are now red. Uh, this is um, obviously for situations where not a lot of light is required at all and it's sort of uh, an ambient uh, light that you can use for example when you're stuck somewhere in a small room or a small area and you still want some kind of illumination without draining the battery. For example, I may operate some equipment, um, maybe read something, I don't know. Uh, we just want some illumination without, you know, using all the light. Now when we press it one more time, it goes into flashing mode, which is similar to the uh, beacon mode that we've uh, looked at before. Uh, and I suppose this can be useful in the same kind of situation. Now obviously the battery of the EH-1S in this case is uh, built and sealed in. Theoretically you could open it to replace it, but I don't really see why you want to do that and they actually warn about not doing that in any kind of combustive environment, which makes sense. But charging happens here on the back with the charging connector. Uh, it includes in the packaging the charging cable, which is just a USB to the proprietary charging port, which clicks on like so, magnetic, and there's two uh, pins here on the side that make sure it lines up properly, and there we go. That's really all there is to it. Uh, the lights, uh, the four LEDs, the red ones will flash and show you how much, or light up rather, and show you how much they are charged, obviously counting for 25% each. And when it's full, then all the four LEDs all will be bright. 
Now also included with the EH1 and EH1S is the head mount with Nikkor branding on it, uh, which as you can see has a single plastic yellow clip here, where this clip on the back obviously goes in. And there you go, it is attached and you can wear it on your head. I um, wouldn't say it's the most stable uh, situation, uh, but like I said before, in the environments where this lamp belongs, mine, oil rig, uh, so on, uh, you'll, you will be wearing a helmet anyway, and I suppose this can go over the helmet um, in the worst case scenario and be nice and steady. When you wear it just on your head, um, you can adjust it you know, in many ways and shapes. Uh, so you, you can make it as tight as you want really, and you can easily make it tight enough for this to sit uh, properly. That said, uh, 151 or 191 grams in the case of the double battery one is a little way to have on your forehead. So I think this does work best uh, with a hard hat, but whether or not the hard hat might have the actual clip on the front or not. So what do we make of the Nightcore EH1 and EH1S? Uh, wow, awesome lights, uh, heavy, heavy duty, uh, do exactly what they need to do. And I like that they've thought it through uh, by not going overboard with the lumens, uh, keeping things simple with the one button operation, uh, and just sticking to the basic principles of really what you need in such a high demand environment uh, like a mine or an oil platform. Uh, and I think Nightcore's done a pretty good job in creating uh, arguably one of the toughest lights I've ever seen.